Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we will be discussing a case of a young female who presented to our ER with an alleged history of uh, deliberate self-harm with paracetamol tablets. So, sir, this is 23-year-old female who presented to our ER with complaints of an alleged history of paracetamol uh, overdose that she took on uh, 22nd at around 9.30 p.m. and then she presented to our ER two days later. Okay. So, it was past 24 hours. So, um, she uh, she uh, there is an alleged history of she taking about 20 tablets of 650 mg paracetamol dose. So, a cumulative dose of 13 grams will come on and uh, she consumed it on 22nd at around 9.30 p.m. following which she went to bed asymptomatic. But early morning of 23rd, she developed multiple episodes of vomiting. Following this, she was taken to a local hospital wherein she was conservatively managed and NAC uh, 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 n acetylcysteine infusion was initiated and then she was referred here in view of worsening LFT. Okay. So, this is how she presented to us. So, in our initial 10 second assessment, patient was conscious oriented, not obeying commands. Primary survey, patient's airway was patent, breathing, chest was clear, uh, bilateral air entry equal, respiratory rate was normal, 18 cycles per minute and normal saturation of 98% in room. Circulation wise, she had a normal BP of uh, 110 over 80 and a heart rate of 74 beats per minute and all peripheral pulses were palpable. Disability wise, full GCS and pupils were also reactive bilaterally. Exposure wise, she was afebrile and had the GRB of only 56 mg per deciliter. So, at this point in time, we cannulated her and because she was conscious oriented, we could have given her oral feeds. But if at all she was symptomatic, then uh, IV injection 25 dextrose can be given as an IV uh, treatment for her hypoglycemia. Okay. Uh, at this outset, uh, we are having a patient mm -hmm. who had come with an alleged uh, paracetamol overdose and you are seeing a uh, GRBS of 55. So, what impression uh, that gives to you at this point of time? So, uh, liver, if at all, it's, it's a major organ for gluconeogenesis. Now, in this parastrum overdose, liver injury is very uh, majorly seen. So, in this case, gluconeogenesis, gluconeogenesis will be impaired, which is why patient will go into recurrent hypoglycemia. Okay. So, this patient will require frequent GRVS monitoring and possible uh, DNS infusion also. Okay. So, this shows that she has got some significant liver injury. Injury, yes. So, suppose the patient is having a normal sugars and fine we are happy but this hypoglycemia we are not at all happy mm -hmm. it is not because she has not consumed anything because of the uh, mm -hmm. impaired LFT. LFT that is one of the reason why they have referred you to your center so mm -hmm. that is one clue that you can get that this patient is going for a liver failure acute yeah. liver failure secondary to a paracetamol overdose okay mm -hmm. So, in our uh, uh, primary adjuncts, we took a VBG. VBG had a pH of 7.31 and a PCO2 uh, 39 with a PCO2 of 51.6 so and a bicarbonate of 31. Uh, VBG. VBG. Yeah. So, uh, then apart from this, we took an ECG. Which Why you took an uh, VBG? Uh, that is to check for the acid base uh, disability. So, in Basically, this we are looking for, for metabolic, ac metabolic acidosis. Metabolic acidosis and mostly on top of that, mostly which acidosis? Uh, high end, uh, high end, high end gap, gap metabolic which, acidosis. Uh, which element will be elevated here now? Lactate La levels will be elevated. What was the lactate level? In this patient, lactate levels was around normal, 1.8. 0.8. 0 .8. So, mm. that is again normal level of mm. lactate only. Mm. So, uh, that is the reason why we have asked for it. Uh, we are not concerned about hypoxia mm -hmm. here because Romeo saturation is maintained. Just we want to know what is the, uh, whether there is any acidosis is there. Bicarbonate level we wanted to know. And uh, since our ABG also gives a lactate, we can have a look at the lactate also. So, any questions? Mm. So, uh, moving on, on, this is only our primary adjunct that we use along with this ECG we took it was a sinus rhythm but that was just done routinely there is no proper indication in this patient as such. Then moving on to the sample history, patient who is not known to have any comorbidities, neither has she had any previous such ingestion histories nor any suicidal ideations in the past. But uh, she presented to us with an alleged history of paracetamol overdose, about uh, 13 grams she took in a single ingestion, so it wasn't a staggered ingestion. And then the next day she went to a, a local hospital, evaluated and treated there already and then she was referred here in view of worsening LFT. And what apart from... You told? 23 years old, so married life of 3 years Okay. and LMP was 18th of April. But initially you did not like that. Ah, the history so wise. Ah. wearing immediately should be incorporated. Ah. So, uh, and she presented on 22nd, so chances of pregnancy wasn't... Overall we did a beta HCG also. Ah, and that uh, also was negative. negative. 
So uh, then clinically she was asymptomatic and general examination everything else was pretty much within normal limits itself. Systemic examination everything was normal limits. Okay. So uh, what are your concerns at this point of time? The patient had come with an allergy injection of paracetamol. Uh, you think it is the toxic dose for her? 13 grams is certainly a toxic dose. So, so how will you calculate that for a patient? Uh, so, uh, toxic dose, actually the regular dose should be, maximum total dose is 4 grams. Uh, uh, no, but that per kg body weight it will change, no? So, uh, what is the so accepted for her weight? For her weight, 15 milligram per kg will be accepted. No, 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 for no, that no. no. I am asking regarding the toxic dose. It toxic be, 10 grams or It will or be 200, 200 milligram per kg body weight mm. or uh, 150 milligram over 24 over to 48 20. hours she has consumed. For two consecutive two days. Two consecutive days. So that will be the toxic dose. Mm. So for example, if you calculate 50 kg for her, mm. so she has consumed uh, around uh, 10 grams itself, mm. it will become a toxic dose for her. Normal mm. regular dose is 15 milligram 15. per kg. On top of that, she has consumed almost 13 30. grams of uh, paracetamol which accordingly is a toxic, toxic dose, dose for her so that is the first thing so she has gone to some other center and come to us for a further management mm. and most important clue what we have right now is she has got a deranged uh, probably an lft but how we judge that that she has got hypoglycemia mm. and one thing is her sensorum is preserved so she is mm. not in an encephalopathy and Acid, acid based disorder is not there. So, mm. these are the two points that is favorable and one non-favorable thing is uh, your hypoglycemia, hypoglycemia. Yeah. initial management. Now, what are the key investigations that you will ask for? Sir, in this patient we can actually, uh, liver failure will majorly present either as encephalopathy, acidosis with lactic acidosis <coughs> and coagulopathy. So, point of care INR, if at all it is available in the centers has to be done and in this patient it was 1.5. 1.5 again it is on the higher side. Higher side. So, then clinically as such she didn't really have and paracetamol overdose comes in stages stage 1, 2, 3 and 4 in stage 1 your patient presents with vomiting, abdominal pain, nausea giddiness, all vague symptoms will be there which cannot be attributed completely to paracetamol overdose. Mm -hmm. Then past 24 hours, 2 to 3 days that's the second stage wherein these symptoms will resolve and patient will have deranged LFT. Uh, lab investigations elevated liver enzymes uh, PTINR, all of this will be elevated. But in uh, stage 3, all of the first symptoms will reappear along with this patient. This is a critical stage wherein the patient can go into encephalopathy, coagulopathy, plus uh, a liver failure can happen, like fulminant liver failure, failure requiring can happen. transplantation can happen. But once the patient passes the stage, it is a stage of recovery. That's the okay. final stage. Okay. So either it can go either to death or the or patient can recover, recover completely yeah. without any abnormality. So these are the four stages. So she presented to us stage, stage two. two, moving on to stage three that we had to monitor Want and to. manage. Okay. So, uh, uh, so she was not in encephalopathy, not in coagulopathy and her past ingestion was Not in coagulopathy, we can't say because INR is on 1.5. 1. 1. Ah. It is on the higher side. Higher side. It is just the point of care INR. There can be variation yes. and error can be there. So definitely we need to send a lab INR. Okay. For just quick assessment, we can do it. Point of care INR. Yeah. Yeah. And she presented to us past 24 hours. So there mm. was no role of GI decontamination unless an unknown co-ingestant is also suspected in the patient. Anyway, after 48 hours, there is no role for GI decontamination. It is completely out. Mm -hmm. uh, initial, after one or two hours, there is no role for your uh, uh, gastric lavage, activated charcoal multidose, almost 48 hours is over. Even if it's a sustained release tablet also, it would have absorption would have happened. Mm -hmm. So, there is no point in uh, thinking of it, GI decontamination. Mm -hmm. Only thing, what else we need to do is whether it is a dialyzable toxin or a non-dialyzable non toxin. It is not a dialyzable. We doesn't need to dialyze uh, for a week reason for removal of the paracetamol, there are best antidotes available which can uh, help in uh, decreasing the toxicity. So this patient presented to us past 24 hours with history of elevated uh, or rather deranged LFT. So in this case, we will continue N-acetyl cysteine infusion and then we will send for paracetamol levels. And then we will look at the uh, uh, paracetamol levels and uh, check See, actually the, the role for sending in pa serum paracetamol levels, actually 48 hours we can't plot in the rheumatic 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 rheumatic. Rheumatic. After 36 hours it is difficult to plot in that area. But one thing is that what you can assure is that if it is still detectable and the level is a little bit more than the plotted line, it definitely that the patient is in toxic range. Mm -hmm. Moreover, what were, we have got an deranged INR and deranged LFT is already available. What was her SGOT, SGPT? SGOT, SGPT was, uh, SGOT was 3500, SGPT was 3900. Both were again elevated. Again. Okay. So, in this case, we will look at the, since this patient 
has deranged LFT and all of that, we had to look at the King College criteria and see if she's a candidate for liver transplantation. <coughs> so King College criteria, a cytomenophen overdose says that the patient should have a pH of less than 7.3 or all of the following should be present like lactate should be more than 3.5 or PT should be more than 100 seconds and INR should be more than 6.5 and her patient should have grade 3 to 4 hepatic NK. Apparently, she didn't never, never had any she of these gone. things. So, we had some time to uh, tackle, tackle that. Huh. And again, the question arises is that this patient have received NAC infusion. They have not mentioned what was oh, the protocol sorry. they have received. <laughs> Usually, when you say NAC infusion, it has to follow the standard protocol of 150 mg initially, yeah. then followed by 50 mg per kg, uh. then 100 mg, the standard protocol infusion. There are different protocols available. Protocol. We have a simple protocol you can use. You have 12 hour protocol available. So, whichever is the protocol, they need to mention that in the summary that was not mentioned. Whether they have just given some 150 mg or 300 mg as an infusion, we don't know. Uh. So, at this point of time, we are in a doubt of how to continue the infusion. Uh. So, uh, it doesn't fit into the initial phase because already 48 hours is passed away. So what we have done, we have uh, started her on an N-style assisted infusion around 300 to 600 mg per hour. We want, we are targeting around a 5 to 10 grams of NAC in the next uh, 50 mg to 100 mg per kilogram of NAC in the next uh, 24 to 48 hours. That is what what we targeted, thinking that they had given some doses from outs. If usually in a paracetamol toxicity, if the patient goes and if the level was high, if they have started an NSTL cystine infusion, as per the guidelines, LFTs should not have deranged to this extent. this extent. Maybe she have not received the exact required dose of NAC, NAC. from outside. So once we started her on NAC infusion, that is the reason why we started on complete dose of NAC infusion. Okay. Is that anything? So in the previous hospital, any gastric decontamination? They mentioned, uh, that details they weren't mentioned as such, sir. It was a vague summary where nothing has been mentioned okay. clearly, sir. Because they went in after the ingestion, she took it in the late night and next day early morning only she, they went. So, whether they have done, uh, nothing has been mentioned clearly. So, there are, uh, like you mentioned, sir, two protocols are there. One is a 72-hour protocol, which is an IV NAC, wherein we give 150 mg per kg of Bronac over span of uh, 60 minutes, following which we will give uh, 50 mg per kg for the next 4 hours. And then for the last... Uh, 16 hours will give it as 100 milligram per kg. So that is so a 20-hour protocol. 20-hour uh, protocol with the first four hours uh, being 12.5 uh, milligram per kg per hour, and the next 16 hours it will be 6.25 uh, milligram per kg per hour dose. So this is 70, uh, 21-hour protocol. The next is a 72-hour protocol. This is a oral NSTL cysteine, wherein we will gi keep giving uh, NSTL cysteine uh, every um, 150 milligram per kg every four hours, totally 17 doses. So these are the two oral and IV pro accepted protocols. Uh, so this patient was initiated and following which her LFTs, INR, everything started to normalize. Okay. Suppose uh, you have this patient has come directly to you. Mm -hmm. So you would have started her on one thing, GA decontamination. If she is presenting within one or two hour of ingestion. Second thing, the protocol. As mm -hmm. per your said, the protocol we would have started. And third thing, what, what would have been done uh, will be what? Uh, symptomatic uh, supportive management. Supportive management. And when will you send a serum paracetamol level? Uh, so, so this patient, it depends on when the patient presents to us. If the patient is presented to us within four hours then we will wait until four hours have been passed post ingestion then we will send for serum paracetamol levels and following this then it depends upon the uh, lab facility if the facility lab will report within eight hours then we will wait until the report and if at all it is crossing the treatment line is when we will start NAC infusion. NAC infusion. Suppose you don't have any facility. facility then we will start anyway then whenever the report comes in and then depending on that we'll we will alter can. the okay. regimen. So when we will send the second sample? Second sample is when we start the infusion and when the infusion is ending that's when we again send the serum paracetamol level and see if it is still detectable in the okay if it is still detectable we will continue we will continue the last, last hour infusion last hour so infusion. that is pretty clear so uh, initially after four hours of ingestion if you have a facility you send and you wait for the result if you are getting it well and good there is a delay don't wait for the result Let's start on an stl system infusion and if you have a facility repeat it after suppose you are following the 20 hour protocol at around 18 hours you can send Center. for the uh, nac infusion uh, so the serum paracetamol level then if it is still detectable you can continue and also you can think of checking the inr also at that point of time mm -hmm. if inr is also elevated you can think of continuing the nac infusion mm -hmm. not just the paracetamol level if liver function is also altered, altered. you can think of continuing sir any okay. questions how the patient now 
patient has improved clinically and also lab investigation wise lfts everything has increased okay. luckily she did not go into coagulopathy or encephalopathy so transplant option was there but it, since she was not a candidate it was not opted no. for uh, whether you want to make it as a medical legal case it is uh, mlc because it's a deliberate self harm uh, see as per the present situation uh, if the patient is going to die or the patient is having some significant issues you can inform the police and they can take an uh, statement from the patient at if at all the patient is recovering no need to inform police okay, you can just document everything as like a medical legal case but no need to inform police uh -huh. so only keep in mind if the patient is going to die or something they need to do some declaration at that time you can call the police and if the patient dies definitely it is a medical legal medical case. case the patient recovers well and good it is not a medical legal case so uh -huh. that is a nutshell uh, so, so then apart from nac uh, what are there the are other? other options also there like uh, simetidine has been tried but it is of no much benefit the best benefits. antidote is nsteril cysteine ah, it is easily available now the cost is not so not very high mm -hmm. so that is the safest option hemodialysis can be tried sir but since snac itself is so efficacious that there is no, no need role for, for hemodialysis okay okay fine that's it sir okay anything sir no. okay. thank you, thank you. Yeah.